Hey everybody, Charles here with Rock Ready UTV, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the new Rock Ready UTV Turbo S winch bumper on this 19 Turbo S. Real fast, I'm just going to go over the winch bumper. Um, whenever I designed this, I wanted to have something that was um, really clean and tucked back. So, I mean, it tucks the winch back as far as possible into the plastics back here. It still allows a lot of ground clearance down here underneath. And I also incorporated in um, my 5 8 inch tow hook or uh, um, tie down point right there on the front. Super clean and tucked up out of the way. Whenever I put the bolt holes in here, I actually made it so that you can run a regular narrow spool or the wide spool winches. Um, I recommend running synthetic ropes with the aluminum fair leads on them. Um, there's also some holes up here on top so you can run some lights if you want to. Now these are 35 inch tires and the winch bumper is completely tucked back behind the front plane of the tires. Um, which is really important for rock crawling. Here you can see the bumper already bolted on here. Um, there's some holes up top, like I said, for lights. You can see how there's different sets of holes there, depending on your fair lead that you're running or your uh, um, narrow or your wide spool winch. So anyways, let's go ahead and show you how I installed it on that machine. All right, the first thing you need to do to actually mount the Rock Ready UTV bumper on here on your Turbo S is remove this front plastic piece right here. Use a Torx 25, and there's two Torx screws right here. After you remove those two, you can just pull this out, and then it kind of clips in the top here. So you just pop it up. He had a little rock light on here, um, so I just unplugged the rock light. That's what that pigtail was. All right, the next thing you need to do is remove these two um, bolts right here through the factory um, toe point or tie down point right here. Now there's a plate on the back side of this that has two nuts that are actually welded to that plate and it kind of sits in a little notch there. So you want to make sure that that plate stays in place. You don't have to use a wrench on the back side. You're going to use your 15 millimeter socket and you're actually going to end up reusing these two um, bolts along with that plate on the back. Just leave the plate sitting there. Um, if you accidentally knock it off there, it's kind of a pain in the butt. You got to fish out of there with like a magnet or something in between the frame and the diff. So try to keep it in place there. All right, the next thing we need to do is actually use a razor blade and you have to notch this plastic a little bit. So these corners right here, where those torque screws went through to hold that front plastic piece on, you need to cut those off right there. And then down under here, you need to cut back just a little bit so that that bumper plate can slide up in there. All right, you can see right here how I notched it. You just cut that corner plastic piece out and then on the bottom, just carry that over until um, you hit the edge of the plastic. So, remember whenever you're using a razor blade, always cut away from you. Um, you don't wanna cut yourself. And a lot of times when you're cutting plastic like this, you don't have to use a ton of force if you just make several cuts in the same spot. All right, you can see how oh, it's cut out right there. Next up, we can also get this grill out of the way. Um, you can put this in and out after the bumper is actually on the machine. All right, next up, you need to get out this backing plate that has the two nuts welded in it along with this carriage bolt and the nylock nut that fits the carriage bolt. And you're actually gonna put this backing plate up into the frame and then you're gonna use that carriage bolt and stick it up through 
the plate along with the frame. Now whenever you tighten this nut down, you don't want to make it all the way tight. You're just going to snug it some because you might need to move this plate around just a little bit to get your, uh, your bolts to line up with those welded in nuts. All right, you can see that backing plate's in there with the nuts. I didn't tighten it all the way. You want this to be able to move around a little bit um, right now, and we'll actually tighten that up whenever we're pretty much finished. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is take this winch mounting plate along with two of the M10 flange bolts, and you're gonna just hold it up here in position. Take your two bolts, start them from the top. You don't have to put these all the way in. All you're gonna do is put those in there enough so that they hold that plate right there like that. And then you're gonna take your winch and just hold it up here. And what you're gonna do is double check to make sure that your, um, your power and your ground posts are clearing your plastic and that the winch is clearing the plastic. So this one fits. Um, some winches, you might have to clock the end of this cover right here. I know I clocked my Terra 45 end um, like one notch over I think. Um, all you got to do to do that is take out these two bolts right here over on the bench and make sure you keep a little bit of pressure on the end cap and then you turn it pushing your bolt down in there until you find the next set of holes. I know my Terra 45 had um, three different settings that you could clock this into. Um, we recommend that the winch go this way with the engagement switch on this side this is the driver's side. Um, again, we're gonna have to change the rope so that it comes out the top. If you don't wanna deal with that, technically you could just flip it over this way, but if you do that, then what you're gonna to have to make sure and do is um, whenever you route your wires and stuff like that, because on the Turbo S, it's got this cutout right here for your wires to come through. It doesn't have the cutout over here, so you may have to notch for your wires if you're gonna do that. It's very simple to change the way this rope comes out though. All right, the next thing you need to do, pull that plate back off the machine, and then you can set your winch down, and we're gonna actually mount this plate onto the winch, or mount the winch on the plate. You're gonna use the hardware that came with the winch. Now that the winch is mounted to the winch plate, what you should do real fast is grab the rest of the bumper and go ahead and slide it over your winch into position here just to make sure that your winch does clear. Um, it should clear the vast majority of the common winches out there that guys are using. Um, the only one that might be real tight is the worn winches. Um, I took measurements off of their website and I made or designed it to clear those winches, but I have not personally physically tested as of this video. All right, now that the winch is mounted to your winch plate, you can go ahead and put it back on the machine. Remember, you're gonna slide it up from the bottom underneath the plastic, put it over that bolt. You can actually utilize that bolt that's through there, just kind of hold it in, in position real fast so you can grab some nuts. We're gonna go ahead and put these top two back in there just slightly by hand. Don't put those all the way in yet. All right, next up, you can grab those stock bolts that were in the factory tow hook. With one hand, you wanna reach behind and kinda hold in position that plate that has those two nuts in it, because you don't wanna accidentally push it out of position while you're getting these bolts in there. Use a 15 mil wrench and go ahead and just um, you're just going to snug these up. You don't want to actually fully tighten these yet. All right, now that we have those center bolts in, you can grab two of these smaller bolts and nuts. Um, I find it easiest to put the bolt through from the back. Now, if the bolt is hitting on the plastic right there, then all you need to do is grab your razor blade and, and notch a little more plastic back until the bolt clears it. Um, put the bolt through, throw the nut on it. And then I also think that it's easiest to tighten these down with two 13 mil wrenches 
instead of a socket. Now, if you were to notch this plastic out right there, which you could, then you can get a socket on it from the front. You could also put the bolt in through this way. Um, that's all personal preference, whatever you want to do. All right, now your winch rope needs to be coming out of the top side of the drum right here. So if it was spooled so that it's coming out the bottom, it's not a big deal, super easy to fix. Just unspool all of your wire, your rope, um, and then there's usually a set screw in here. This one's an eighth inch Allen. Um, so we're gonna loosen it up and we're just gonna basically flip this around so that it goes in there the other direction. And then after that, um, whenever your winch is actually wired up, or you can run a couple jumpers to it real fast, you can spool it back in. This actually takes care of one issue with winches. Um, something that you should always do with a winch whenever you install it is pull all the rope all the way out and re-spool it back on the drum, the drum anyways, whether you're actually changing direction or not. That way you can make sure that the rope is actually tied on the drum so that the first time you use it and you put a lot of weight on there, it doesn't get caught and tangled with itself on the drum. Now, if you're using a synthetic um, winch rope, then normally it will just have like some um, electrical tape rope or something like that wrapped around the rope. And you always wanna make sure that you have at least three wraps around your drum. Um, never have less than that because um, you need to have that friction wrap on there. So now that that's tight on there again, I'm gonna go ahead, since this winch is not actually hooked up yet, I'm gonna go ahead and have to fish the front of the bumper over all this rope, not that big a deal. And then once we've got the wiring and everything on there, then we can actually wheel this rope in there like it's supposed to be. Now that I've got the uh, winch rope over the top of the drum and I fished it through the front of the bumper, we can actually lift this up here and get the winch um, front portion of the bumper into position and get it bolted on. So I mean, it just pops on just like that. Those two 10 mil bolts go to the top. Down here on the bottom corners, you're gonna use your two remaining smaller bolts and nylock nuts. You're gonna put those in and you can use your 13 millimeter wrenches. Now that those bolts are in there, we can actually go back and tighten down all the bolts so you can run those down. You can tighten that center bolt down that's up there holding the other plate in position. Um, you can tighten all these down, tighten those. All right, now that you've got all the bolts tightened on there, the next thing you would do is fish that um, winch rope through your fair lead and get it bolted up there. Um, after that, you could go ahead and make sure you get your grill in there, do all your wiring, and you'd be done. I'm not gonna actually bolt this on there, and I'm not gonna spool this rope back in or nothing because this customer is actually gonna switch to a synthetic rope which means that this fair lead won't go on either because you will use an aluminum um, fair lead instead of this roller style with a synthetic rope. So anyways, you guys have any questions, just uh, give me a call, shoot me a text, shoot me an email, and uh, see you out there on the trails.